Welcome back to my channel, Made Between the Pages. My name is Taylor, and today we have the second vlog that I've ever made on my channel. So in this vlog, we've got some nice book mail. We're going to do uh, some bookshelf reorganization, which I'm actually about to do now, as well as this intro. Uh, you're also going to see me make some progress through Red Sister and do some Japanese study. Um, and then whatever other adventures I uh, can include before uh, the week is up. I'm having fun playing with different angles for recording, so if you guys like this angle more than my usual one, you know, give me some feedback, let me know what's up. But for now, let's go ahead and start the vlog. Okay guys, welcome to my second reading vlog. It's about two days after I finished the first one. And uh, as you saw at the end, I got a lot of reading done. And then I guess I just kind of thought, well, that's my reading job done for a while. So I haven't gotten any farther in the Red Sister. Uh, so this is my plan today. I really want to blow through this. I don't know if I could finish it today, but I think I could get close. Also, this morning I have some very exciting book mail coming. Um, I'm just waiting for that, that ping pong on my doorbell so I can go get it. And I can't wait to catch that on camera with you guys. Uh, and then once I receive this book mail, it's a big chunker of a book, which I don't think anyone's going to be surprised, but I've got to reorganize my shelf because I want to display it. So we'll see if I'm savvy enough to get that on camera, I don't know. <laughs> um, but for now, I'm going to be reading Red Sister. And then I finally got the audiobook for Way of Kings. Um, it was on hold for my library. So I'm definitely not going to be able to finish the audiobook before I have to return it. But I am a full month two months behind now on the storm along. Yay, we love that for me. <laughs> um, I love Brandon Sanderson, but I don't know why. I just didn't pick up The Way of Kings the last two months. I guess because I've already read it, so I didn't prioritize it. But I hope to pick up that audiobook. Maybe if I ride my bike later, if I go out and get a coffee or something, uh, I can start that. But yeah, I'll check back in with you guys when shit happens. Okay guys, it's here! Um, I mentioned earlier that I had some book mail hopefully coming today. This could be one of two books. Uh, I read Rage of Dragons uh, as an audiobook and I loved it so much that I bought it physically. And then there was another book called The Kingdom of Liars by Nick Martell that The Bearded Bookworm and Ben over on Ben's Blurb both read and they really enjoyed it and the cover was gorgeous. So I'm usually really strict about what books I actually physically purchase um, just because of the nature of where I live and, and, and I might be moving in the future. So with that in mind, I'm usually pretty strict, but the cover was so beautiful that I just went for it physically anyway and I broke my own rule. So it could be either one of those. I'm kind of hoping for Rage of Dragons because I wanna set it up uh, on my top shelf and display it today, but we'll see. Let's see what I got. Ooh, that sound when you pull the tab off. Let's see. Whoa! Oh, she's so beautiful! Rage of Dragons! Yes! I'm so happy to have this beauty physically. Oh my goodness, look at that. And the spine. The, they just came out with the paperback version and for some reason they changed it from being entirely ivory and changed it to like this brown edge. And I'm not a fan of that. So I was really happy that um, the hardcover is still widely available. So, oh God, it's gorgeous. This book is amazing. Um, oh, just a basic. Nice gilding though, on the hardcover there, or on the, the naked book there. Oh, there's a little bit of, oh God, it feels a little dusty, that's interesting. But yeah, Book Depository usually sends things, you know, in 
good condition. Unlike Amazon, I don't know why their books are destroyed when they get to me, but I refuse to order from them anymore because every book I've gotten, I've had to return it at least twice to get like a decent version. But um, I'm getting distracted. If you haven't read this book, it's so good. Um, if you don't like battles or military fantasy, I will admit this might not be the book for you. But um, as soon as I read it, I knew I had to have it. And I cannot wait to put this beauty on my shelf. I'll check back in uh, if I get some more mail today. I don't know when Kingdom of Liars is coming, but I'll film it when it does. Might be in this vlog, might be in another one, but you guys know this feeling. Book mail's the best. Okay, so we are at a place called Comeda Coffee this time, um, not Starbucks. And the atmosphere is cozy, but um, we're gonna actually try the coffee. Uh, last time I came here, I didn't like the coffee so much, but uh, this is how it's his first time. So, hang on, let me turn you guys around so you can see what we got. Okay, so Hato got a normal cafe au lait. This is the one that I didn't like last time, so I'm curious if he likes it. And then I got this cream au lait concoction. <laughs> I'm guessing it's ice cream, the cafe au lait. What do you think, babe? <laughs> this all? Just milk. Right. That's what I thought last time, too. So I'm hoping with a bunch of ice cream melting into it, it'll be good. We came here for the atmosphere because it's the closest to our house. <gasps> you did not. This is what I deal Later. with, ladies and gentlemen. The best part. On the top. The best part. On the top. <laughs> anyway, itadakimasu. Okay, so I had, I've had the top part of my cafe au lait float. It's kind of like a root beer float, but with a cafe au lait. But I don't like their cafe au lait, so <laughs> it's better. Anything's better if you put, you know, soft cream or ice cream with it. But um. Uh, yeah, Hayato, would you recommend this place for coffee? No, we don't recommend it. <laughs> but, like I said, the atmosphere, you know, there's a lot of space. So you can just kind of relax for a long time here. So, um, now that I've eaten my ice cream, I'm going to start Red Sister. Uh, read a couple chapters of this and then I have some studying I need to do. But uh, if I have any thoughts, I'll let you guys know. Let's get reading. So I just read a couple chapters of Red Sister and it was really good. I'm really enjoying it, but I'm still moving pretty slow through it. But hey, you know, go at my pace. And now I'm shifting to study some Japanese. Um, I have this collection of short stories that uh, is specifically designed for a certain level of the test that I take. And then I have a color code, who's surprised, we're all not, um, where I highlight kanji that I uh, either know the pronunciation of. Let's see, well, let me just show you. So here's my guide here. So I use blue for grammar I don't know. I use pink for words I just don't know. I use yellow for uh, not knowing the kanji, but knowing the pronunciation and the word itself. And I use purple for not knowing the pronunciation, but I've seen the kanji before. Um, so these differentiations are actually really important for me when I read Japanese, because when I go back through this and study the kanji individually, not just in the context of the stories, I need to know if I should practice writing it or if I just need to practice um, remembering the pronunciation associated with it. So those differentiations are pretty important. So I'm going to read a couple of these uh, and then I think we're going to head out because we've been here for a couple hours now and I'm hungry. <laughs> I don't know if he is, but um, maybe we'll go to the beach, get some, some food there. So I'll check in with you guys if it doesn't rain. Fingers crossed. So 
I mentioned earlier, uh, after getting the Rage of Dragons, that I was going to reorganize my bookshelf in order to fit, fit it on here, on my display shelf. Um, so this is a different angle than you usually see when I'm recording, but this is the main shelf that you see behind me. And I do have a lot of books that I've kind of amassed over the last you know, maybe a month or two, not a lot of books, but a few that I would really like to display behind me. While I love this color scheme and I really like a lot of these books, I think I might want to change the aesthetic a little bit. Um, and until I move into my, you know, forever house, which this is a wonderful place, but this is not where I'm going to be forever. I'm not willing to invest in lots of bookshelves and lots of books. Um, when I'm just gonna have to probably end up shipping them overseas at some point. So I'm kind of careful about what I buy and, and, and the space or the bookshelves that I buy to display them. So I'm gonna have to do a little bit of work here to see what I can magic up. But I have a couple things that I definitely wanna put up there. Of course, uh, Rage of Dragons, I'm gonna fit in there somewhere. I also uh, really want to display The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo. I bought the physical copy for this because I plan to reread it physically. I read it as an audiobook first, but if you've been around my channel, you know I love this book. So I really want to display this one. I also have The Language of Thorns, which I absolutely adore from Leigh Bardugo. Um, if you haven't read this book before, the inside, let me show you guys. The inside of this is just as gorgeous as the outside. So here is the beautiful outside dust jacket, the naked cover to die for, and then the actual stories in here have gorgeous illustrations that like increase as the story moves along and in the end form a full picture. And you know, I've talked about Lee Bardugo on my channel before, but her books are hit or miss, but this one is 100% a hit for me. I, yes. So <laughs> I wanna find a place to display this beauty. I also have all of my monstrous comics. These I might not be able to fit on here, but they're here just in case, because I really did enjoy these. And finally, I have a couple cute little pocket editions that I've kept in my bedroom on my desk in there, but they're so cute and adorable. I kind of want to see if I can display them here. Um, I have Alice in Wonderland with the gilded edges. Read this book, not a fan, but it's so cute. <laughs> I think I, I kind of want to display it. I have the 75th anniversary edition of The Hobbit. This is a gift from one of my really good friends. He actually sent it to me uh, in Japan from America and it's just this cute little like really beautiful pocket edition and it deserves a bit more love than it was getting where I had it in my room. And this last one is one that I just kind of picked up on a whim when I was in America and it's the golden treasury of English verse so it's like assorted poems and I'm not gonna lie it was mostly a cover by because I mean look at that. Um, but again, it's been sitting in my room and it's really cute where it is, but because it's so pretty, uh, if I can display it, I kind of want to. So we'll see uh, what I can fit on my shelf. Obviously all of these can't fit. Um, and then this is like a manga shelf that I share with Hayato. So I'm probably not going to shift these. Although I could shift maybe half of one series down. I might do that. Um, and then this is my Brandon Sanderson shelf. I even have some more paperbacks of uh, the Stormlight Archive in my room, but uh, this is probably not gonna change because I, you know, it's Sanderson. I have the Japanese editions here too, so this shelf might not change much, um, but we'll see what I can work out.
Okay, so I'm pretty happy with how this turned out. Uh, so I wanted to have at least one book kind of facing out, but it couldn't fit on this shelf. So I kind of compromised by putting my Hobbit up in the corner and I really like it there. I think it's cute. I didn't mess with this second shelf just because like I said, some of these are Hayato's and I don't want to move his stuff around too much, but I don't know if you can see on the camera, but this shelf is kind of bowing a little bit in the middle. Um, maybe because all of my super heavy books are up here, so it's a little bit concerning, but I'll keep an eye on it. Um, so as you can see here, let me move my hydrocultures. I've got Priory of the Orange Tree, uh, Crescent City, Circe, Six of Crows, Crooked Kingdom, Language of Thorns, Foundry Side, Shorefall, Rage of Dragons, uh, The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo, and then the Gentleman Bastards series plus my Hobbit, that uh, collection of poetry, uh, the Alice Wonderland, and my two uh, Japanese versions of Harry Potter. Um, I've decided to shift Harry Potter to another shelf because even though I love it and will love it until the day I die, I don't necessarily feel like I need to display it uh, to show my taste in books right now. So this is how the shelf is looking currently. We'll see if I change it up later. Got my little plants on top. And the Brando Sando shelf down here. So you guys got a mini bookshelf tour. I didn't really know I was gonna do that. Okay, so I just finished a battle scene in this book with one of the main characters. I'm not going to say who, just for spoilers, but one of the main characters got into a battle and they didn't win, like they lost. And I really am enjoying that aspect of this book. Like the characters are not amazingly good at everything. Every character has their own individual strength and no one is like a catch all. And I'm really, really enjoying that aspect. Like whatever the characters get, they earn. And the fact that this main character has worked really hard, but in the end they met their match and, you know, rightfully so in this case. And I like that when a battle happens, I really don't know who's going to win. It's really refreshing to read. And it's refreshing to also read a cast of female characters that are not one archetype. <laughs> it's not like small, thin women who are stronger than they look. Um, it's thinner women whose skill is speed, so it makes sense that they're small. It's larger women who are almost like giants and their skill is strength, reasonably so, because they're like giants, you know? Also, there's a disabled character and that character plays to her strengths as well. So. It's just really refreshing and while the beginning was slow for me and I'm still reading it slowly, um, clearly I'm making progress, but I'm reading it slowly. Um, I'm really starting to enjoy the authenticity of this and the fact that nothing is taken for granted in this world. So I'm thinking I'm gonna blow a lot through the, through the rest of it a lot quicker. Let's see, I'm on page 266 and I'm hoping at least to get to page like 360 tonight. So I'm gonna read another 100 pages. And I think, how many pages does this book have? It has 475, so that would leave me with 100 more pages to go. Uh, so hopefully 100 more pages tonight, I can get that done. But um, yeah, I'll check in later. So we're out to eat on a rainy day. We've got some udon, which is Hayato's favorite noodle because he's from Fukuoka. <laughs> udon isn't my favorite, but it is a delicious noodle. So we're trying two different types. Itadakimasu. So mine is udon noodles, like thicker noodles in a tampon. Uh, sauce 
<laughs> I guess. Champon soup. Uh, and so it has like champon style vegetables and things on top of just a different type of noodle. And uh, actually, I really like this, but Haruto is not feeling this so much. Yeah. It's noodle apple level, you know? I do know, yeah. yeah. Um, very good, but it's good. So. Okay, so you know how I said we were eating udon uh, in a, on a rainy day? Well, that rainy day became a torrential downpour. So thanks to the umbrella, my hair is not too bad, but my back is soaked and my legs are soaked up to my thighs. So that's great. But the positive side of this is your girl got book mail when we got home. So I think that makes it worth it. Uh, we all know what this is, but it's going to be beautiful. So let's open it. Okay, like I said, I'm soaked. Pants are soaked. All my back is soaked. But I cannot wait to open this book. So we're going to be careful with it. This is my towel. <laughs> Make sure it stays safe. But I can't wait to see it. So I believe that this is the Kingdom of Liars which both Ben from Ben's Blurb and the Bearded Bookworm gave really good reviews and ended up buying the physical version because of how beautiful it is, like I said earlier in the vlog. So let's see it. She's kind of thick. Oh my gosh. There is that cover. Gorgeous. Kingdom of Liars. Let's see what she looks like naked. She's pretty standard. She's got some, some gold lettering on the side and black. But man, that is a beautiful book. And let's see how many pages we've got. We've got, oh, the writing's quite big actually. I'm impressed. Impressed? I don't know if that's a word. Surprised? The writing's so big. But it looks like we've got. Why can't I find the page? Five hundred and ninety-six pages. Whoop. Uh, so it's less than six hundred. So I think that I can read this. Oh, it smells like a new book. <laughs> I think that I can read this pretty quickly, but I have been reading fantasy quite slow recently, so we'll see if I decide to go for this next. And I just saw the uh, release of the second cover, uh, the second American cover, and it is also just as gorgeous. Now I'm usually a UK cover person, so I'm really surprised how much the uh, American cover slaps, but I'm gonna go dry off because your girl is wet. Okay guys, so here is what's become kind of our late night uh, end of the vlog or end of the day in a vlog check-ins. Did I read any more of Red Sister today? No. Did I record a bunch of videos, have a delicious dinner with my boyfriend, and then get sucked down the rabbit hole of uh, watching people react to Lord of the Rings for the first time? Maybe. <laughs> But overall, I have no reading to update you on. It was a wonderful day, and I really enjoyed it. So I'll let you guys know if I get some reading done tomorrow. Uh, tomorrow, I start my usual like work schedule. So I think that you know my reading isn't going to be as intense. I won't get as much done each day, but I do plan to finish at least Red Sister and one other or two other books before the end of July, which is just, what, four days now? <laughs> but we'll see how I do. Um, but for now, I'm going to bed. Night. My ass just woke up, so you're not gonna be seeing me <laughs> at the moment, but I just wanted to share with you guys, I mentioned cicadas, right, in some of my previous videos because that is the quintessential 
aspect of Japanese summer, and I just woke up this morning. Do you hear this nonsense today? Huh. Clearly, I have a lot to say right now. There's no way I'm sleeping with this. Okay, so my work has been a little crazy this past week. Um, I haven't checked in for, I don't know, maybe like three days now. Um, and since my work's been a little crazy, I haven't had much time for physical reading. So I haven't read any more of Red Sister, but I did jump completely, like dive headfirst into the Way of Kings audiobook. And the first time I read the Stormlight Archive, I read it physically. And uh, this time I wanted to experience it uh, for the Storm Along. I'm late as hell starting, but um, I wanted to experience it audibly. And I love this experience. So I'm not a huge fantasy audiobook lover. Um, I will do it if I have no other option, but I tend to lean towards more thrillers and stuff when I'm listening to audiobooks or um, nonfiction. But I, since I already know this world, I'm not learning it. I'm just jumping back into what I know. And it's as incredible as it was the first time I was in this world. I mean, I just, I'm about 40% through and I'm at the part in the chasms where Kaladin finally makes progress with what he's trying to do currently in the book. Um, I'm trying to keep this spoiler free, but for people who have read it, you know, he decides to try something again, even though he's failed before. And it's finally like starting to work, the thing that he's, he's trying and it's just, it's amazing. <laughs> like I was giggling, I was laughing, I, I'm completely in this world and the descriptions of the world and um, like the shattered planes are just as enthralling as I remember them being like I am fully in this world now and I'm loving it. So I think I'm going to blow through this audiobook. I only have it for a couple more days and I think I still have about 29 hours. I'm listening at double speed. Um, but I'll definitely finish it before I have to return it. So uh, yeah, The Way of Kings, just as good as I remember. So I'm gonna do some editing tonight, actually. Um, I have a video that I'm really hoping I can get up that I actually filmed with Hayato. And it's just requiring a lot of editing, but I really wanna get it up for you guys. So hopefully I can do that tonight. Maybe I'll listen to some more of the audiobook. I'd like to read physically, but I, pretty confident that after editing I'm not gonna wanna sit down and read. We'll see. So this isn't the last update yet. I really would like to finish Red Sister in the next couple days and then end the vlog there. But we're coming up on a week now and uh, I'm gonna have to cut it soon whether I finish or not. So we'll see. But yeah, Way of Kings audiobook. Perfection. Loving it. Hey guys, uh, so I've been sick in bed for like four days now. <laughs> um, so I just haven't really felt up to filming. Um, I've had high fevers and stuff, so. Uh, but I wanted to do an update because I'm feeling kind of okay at the moment. So um, because I've just been in bed, I have been able to do quite a bit of reading. Um, I finally finished Red Sister and I ended up giving it four stars. I can link my Goodreads down below um, so you can see like the details of what I thought but there were things that I really liked about it and then there were some things that I that really bothered me about it but overall um, it is definitely a strong fantasy you know, beginning of a fantasy, and I do plan to continue with the Ancestor trilogy moving forward. So yeah, I'll get more into detail whenever I'm up to filming my um, wrap up. But I did finally finish that. It took me about two and a half weeks, which is really odd for me. That book was less than 500 pages, so 
I don't know why it took me so long, but overall it was enjoyable. And then I listened to more of my Way of Kings audiobook. Um, I was actually really enjoying it. I was about 70% through. And then my library returned it while I was listening to it. So that was great. <laughs> but like I said in my first update about that, I'm loving being back in this world. These characters are just as wonderful as I remember them being. Yasna, oh my gosh, I want her to be a real person because I want to talk to her in real life. And Kaladin just, oh, I remember liking his perspective the best in the first book, and that hasn't changed. He's not necessarily my favorite character in the series, but his plot line in The Way of Kings is by far the best. And um, whenever his perspective comes up, I'm like, ooh, yay. Upon diving back into this world and experiencing The Way of Kings again, I have to say that my favorite character in this whole book is Rock. <laughs> we stand Rock in this household. I love him from the bottom of my heart. Every time he pops up in a scene with Kaladin, I'm like, yes. <laughs> so like I said, Kaladin is not my favorite character, but I think part of the reason why I love his chapters so much is because Rock is in it hands down. So um, like I said, I'm 70% through that, but my library just returned it automatically. And I think I have to wait another like two weeks because there's other people waiting. So when I get that back, um, I'll finish that uh, definitely this month. Uh, I also listened to The Only Good Indians. This is bleeding into my TBR territory, but I don't have the energy to make that video right now. So um, I will get that up ASAP, but Deidre, over on Shade Tree Reads organized a buddy read for The Only Good Indians. And so I listened to that via audiobook in one day and I have such mixed thoughts on that book. Like it's so creepy, but like not at the same time. I don't know. Like it's definitely like a psychological, it's very psychologically effed up. Um, but I do think that there were portions of it that I didn't understand like the full significance of because I'm not well versed in the morality that exists, the moral, you know, structures that exist in Native American culture or indigenous cultures, um, especially Blackfoot culture, which was what the main characters were in this book. It's definitely like atmospheric and creepy. So if that's your vibe, you could definitely go for it. I ended up giving it three stars. Like I said, I'm kind of conflicted on it, but three stars isn't a bad rating. You know, I still enjoyed it. And I'll be sure to link DJ down below as well. The third book that I was able to finish um, the last couple days was The Tea Dragon Society. That book has stolen my heart. <laughs> I mean, people told me it was cute, so I was like ready for cuteness, but I wasn't ready for that much cuteness. <laughs> I want a tea dragon so bad. I want a, a needy, finicky tea dragon for myself. And I just love that the dragon's names were tea names, Jasmine and Chamomile, and, or Chamomile, however you say it. Um, I just, ah, uh, it was so cute. So I read it online um, because Katie O'Neill is amazing and has it free online, but I definitely want to buy the physical version because I feel like, I mean, it's so short, it's like 60 pages or whatever. And I feel like anytime I'm, I'm feeling down, I could whip that out and just, you know, get an immediate pick me up. So uh, I'm gonna buy hopefully the physical version of that and the second and the third book, the third book when it comes out. Um, I want to have those in my collection, but I gave that five out of five stars. Like I was laying in bed feeling like absolute shit and I was like, I need something happy. And the Tea Dragon Society was just 
exactly what the doctor ordered. So I'm definitely going to make this the end of this vlog just because I don't know, you know, when I'm going to be feeling better or whatever. So, but I think it was a pretty successful reading vlog overall because I think in this vlog I finished what, like four books, four or five books, which I mean, hey, that's one positive side of not being able to work. <laughs> Let me know in the comments down below if you've read any, any of the books from this blog and what you thought about them. And like I said, I'll have more, you know, concrete, full thoughts when I do my wrap ups. Uh, these books are going to be split, though, between my um, July and August wrap ups, because this vlog has gone into August. Yay. <laughs> but for now, I'm going to head out. Jenny.